Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and beautiful people across the whole world, it's Thursday. It is the 8th of December, and this is an actual show. Not just me derping and going live, no. Today we are going to play a deck. A deck deliberately. One that I'm not proud to play, but one that I think will cause me to learn. I gotta cut this. I gotta put in this. The Pirate Warrior. Oh, the Pirate Warrior. The deck which has set the world on fire. Speaking of on fire, let me just note, I went outside to a little walk around and it's raining in uh, California right now and I, I, got a, I got a hair curl. Look at, look at that little curl, like right at the end. At the end of my widow's peak. Ooh. I can't even help but have it. Look at it. It's like literally a concentric circle. It's amazing. Um, so I'm looking styling. I'm looking good. I'm feeling the way that I really should. To go to the face. To go to the face. P-P-H-H. Huh? Let me explain a little bit about what makes this deck so good. Patch is the pirate. I, I believe... Um, I believe I called this absolutely out of control good in my card review. I think I did. I'm, I'm nearly certain that I called this card out of control good in the card review. Now, let me just tangent for a moment. The reason I don't really remember my exact reviews, except for Solia, um, that I think is bad, and Jade Blossom, which I was really excited about. I have a bunch of tools in my head that I was using to generate my opinion on things. So when someone says, hey, what's your opinion? I don't just remember the opinion. I try to reform the opinion in the moment. And I've been playing a lot, 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 lot of Mean Streets of Gadgets in. So of course my thought process has changed and shaped quite a bit. And I think I remember calling Patches the Pirate insane. I think I recall because, um, first of all, it's a free minion. You play a pirate and it comes out. And I thought that that alone made it really, really good. Um, and there was some synergy with pirates that I thought was maybe secondarily good, but I really increasingly feel like what makes Patches the Pirate so fucking insane is that if you play an Azoth's first mate, which is a pirate, it summons Patches. Or if you play Saucy Deckhand, it summons Patches. Or most frequently of all, if you play a small time Buccaneer, it summons Patches. So now you have the capability of having all these other things that trigger off pirates, like the Blood Sail Cultist. You control a pirate, give your weapon plus one, plus one. I mean, that's so good. I really think the Blood Sail Cultist is only questionably powerful when you're trying to be an aggro deck, unless you can get those pirates out all the time, and you can. So, I mean, Patches is insane as is. There's a shitload of weapons in the form of Nazoth's First Mate, Upgrade, Fiery War Axe, and of course the Arcanite Reapers. We have the Arcanite Reaper, Leroy Jenkins, and Mortal Strikes, and Corcoran Elite sort of as the finishers. Frothing Berserker is insane, and pretty much this is all face damage. One of the big reasons why Pirate Warrior is so potent is because it doesn't really get messed up that badly by sweepers. It doesn't really get messed up by sweepers because you often have one or two things on the board and the damage is from charge. From Corcron Elite, from weapons. Only in the very early game are you doing a little board building and doing some of that face damage. These are all going away. I think I chuck the axe. Maybe I keep the axe. Does this need to run a Gorhal tools to sift with? It's actually a negative card to run a Gorhal. Because most of Gorhal's value is in the fact that it can... Uh, I think I should have kept the axe. The, a lot of the value of the Gorhal is in the fact that it can do multiple oh, removals. Alright. Alright, let's decide this on turn one, shall we? Hey, hey, you want to buy a funnel cake? Who here is in the mood for a funnel cake? I wanted to kill the weaponer guy, because that's a really big threat. We're just going to go for the face, because I'll probably have to weapon and then hit into this, and then I can coin out the Corcron Elite. So sick. 
And I, I think I should have begun this show by talking about the most important reason why I'm playing this right now. This deck is very, 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 very strong. And so consequently, I am trying to find out how to defeat it. And the easiest way I feel to do that is to bang out a whole bunch of games as the Pirate Warrior, get shit on a good amount, and then learn. Let me move myself over a little bit. Ah, feels good. Feels good to be over here now. I'm over here now. Dark Knight Reaper is so amazing. Well, this slows us down, doesn't it? Not to be deterred, Sean plays out as much as he can. I mean, the obvious thing that beats this deck is taunts. But also, these kind of slightly less aggressive, but still very, 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 very aggressive decks, I think have merit. I mean, I'm just going to the face, because this deck, this is a deck that is, uh, I've seen around a lot. It's sort of, has just a few pirates. And then is mainly a Jade deck that's just trying to build a board control very quickly and win. It's not trying to get big Jade Golems. It's trying to get several two to four um, stat Golems and just kill the opponent. Okay, so this is a little bit of a reassuring turn. Nobody. You are fucking kidding. <laughs> Shit. God, that, ugh. Oh god, I'm low enough maybe to kill. I, I would like to state for the record that I really hate the add a random card thing to your hand. Because my entire plan, which was to go for the rogue's face, because this deck does not run any taunts. His deck does not run taunts. Um, I was going for the face because I would eventually be able to kill him. And then when that random card comes in, yes, that messes up my plan, but in no way that I actually feel a meaningful avenue to respond to. Right? It's just like, alright, well, that, like, what happened just sucks and that's it. We can deal 12. Well played. I have an axe to grind. Ah! I'm serious. This deck runs no taunts. <laughs> and he gets two. I This deck runs no taunts. Oh, when I say this deck, I didn't mean my deck. I mean his, this deck. Sorry, there's two this decks here. Should have been more clear. Well, I guess random taunts is what beats us. And I think that this, I, I believe that this Pirate Warrior, I'll have to play it a little bit more, but I, I believe the Pirate Warrior has some reasonable ways to deal successfully with yeah. taunts. Not huge taunts, but some ways. Your soul shall be mine. Victory or death. But not when I literally plan on him having zero taunts. Then it does not work. <laughs> Silent Knights is low. We have learned that a different fairly aggro deck with insane RNG is the counter. So, it seems. To the face. Oh, 
me. Oh my god. I don't know if this is bad or not, but whenever I lose to this deck, um, a lot of the time it's to a big ass frothing berserker. Er. Maybe I'll do that combo. Er. Oh, but just inform me that the Day Night Cookbook is closing submissions tomorrow, and it's a nice PDF with 65 recipes from Astra Asp Writer 85. That's the sort of name where you have to be very deliberate about your pronunciation, eh? Eh? This is actually too sick to resist. I can run these both out. Voktar Ogar. The fact that he power overwhelming to that is. Pretty good news, I think, to indicate that we're in acceptable shape. We're going to be able to get another 12 damage out of this, which is nice. Oh, and he's helping us out hard, huh? Everyone's running uses nowadays. It's just too sick not to go for. Screw this guy. I'm going in. Let's draw a weapon and play a blood sail, huh? <laughs> Is this reality here? No, that was that was a dust particle. Okay. Doi land lubber. This has not been the best starts. Oh no, man! All right, we lost. Alright. Maybe Pirate just sucks. Maybe that's the problem. But I've only played once. Now twice. Let's keep going. That on your shirt. It's a logo for an unbelievable musician named Absofacto. Alright. It seems like a little bit of a better run out. Zelda Assassin says you just have to embrace your inner pirate. You got it, Glory. Let's do it, man. Pirate War is one of those decks that was sick right out the gate. Avast! Kengar Avastar. I really am just curious to see where the real consistent issues are in the matchups because I think that I actually need a couple of games under my belt to feel confident in saying anything. I think I... I think I actually do have to kill this thing off. Because there's so many ways for him to buff it up. My immersion is not complete without an eye patch. Oh, well, then I best I I best I get her get an eye patch. I keep switching letters in my sentences. It's really annoying. 
I've been doing it for the last year. So tilting. So frustrating. I oh well, PP, HH. Max the Fleece says, Sean, you've mentioned before how you find Nick's Assassin has terrible voice lines and find the writing not to be very good. However, you seem not to mind StarCraft voice lines for you. What distinguishes Dota voice lines and StarCraft lines in terms of the writing? One word. Story. There is an aesthetic and a feel to the all of the units that together give a sensation of Terran when you're playing Terran units. The Protoss units all together, like all the Protoss units, if you look at them, they say things like, you know, and Taro Adun, and and other and other notable Protoss gibberishish. Well, this game went well. Right? Like when you select Dragoon and you send it somewhere and it goes, Jordan Dock. I don't know what that means, but he says it. And there's all like, from the shadows I come. My life, or there's a, there's a triumph and an interesting linguistic um, sensation to yeah. Protoss that is unique from Terran. That is of course unique from Zerg, where there's personality and expression. I mean, I think that the, the dialogue lines in there are... Maybe I'll hang on to this and just bank on getting a weapon because I'm so sick. And, um, so thick. I think this is better. And when I, when I play, um, Dota, I find that each character feels a little bit more like a gimmick. Like, Nature's Prophet seems to have an erection for forests. And that's about all I know about it. Go green! Ah, to mulch with you. Uproot and after them. You know, and I'm like, alright, no, I mean, yeah, no, I get it. Like, no, I, I mean, I hear you. I'm right there with you, man. But I don't necessarily get... Something... Uh, uh, like, Entaro Adun is a silly sounding thing, and my life fire is a silly sounding thing until you have an entire world for that to live in. Right? If you had any of the South Park characters behaving anywhere in, like, a Lord of the Rings movie, it would look weird. It would look actually fucking odd. I don't think he's gonna be running any buff cards, so I'm gonna go to face. Where, and, uh, like, like South Park makes sense on its own and everything in Lord of the Ring makes sense on its own but when you start mixing and matching you have like a lot of problems right there's that idea of how it fits in and all of the Dota characters as far as I feel this is again purely my opinion they, they all feel like puns and meme generators they don't have the same sort of characterization that someone like GLaDOS might have Look at my removal. My removal's amazing. This is more damage overall. I'm not looking to get, like, the most value out of this. I'm looking to get the most total damage. Aaron Twice says, literally, Stick of Truth. What do you mean by Stick of Truth? Like, I know there's that's the game, but I haven't played it. React42 says, yeah, well, MOBA isn't the best game to build lore around. There's no single-player story-driven experience. See, I would point to the greatest multiplayer game designers in the world, Wizards of the Coast, as a sensational example of how to build a mythos and a sense of lore and world through mechanics and art and flavor text, as well as supplementary materials like story writing. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the books are a great example. And all the other, you know, transmedia stuff that they do. 
Aaron Tuis is a parody's Middle Earth to take its mechanics. Which is fine, uh, fine. Again, like, if you want to do that, you can't just literally pick them up and place them in. It has to be done as a thoughtful hole. This deck feels fucking insane. And so I think that if we look at the history of MOBA games, we ask ourselves a question. Where did MOBAs come from? Well, there's a sort of thing that happens in the gaming industry, in the gaming space, where there's shitloads of mod makers and indie devs and tinkerers who are exploring new ideas all the time. And of the probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of little prototypes and games and ideas and things that are made there. Um, some of those get turned... I forgot this card existed. We gotta build this deck. We gotta build a secreter. A secreton. Just look at that horse. So yeah, um... There's all these different uh, mod makers and indie game devs tinkering around, fiddling, coming up with their various ideas, and some of those emerge and rise to the top and become something new and special altogether. Um, okay, I'm going for... Um, like this. Like this. Woo! Did you see me, like, almost click? And... Dota was one of those games. Dota was one of those games of people just fiddling in the sea of UMS games that were being made in Warcraft 3. That one really rose up and rose to the top. And Valve very smartly looked at that and said, yeah, we're going to try to support that and turn it into a full title with financial backing and support and build a revenue model around it. Mmm! Yeah! And Food Time says, I played more Dota than Warcraft 3. True for many, 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 many people. It's true for so many, many, many people. So I'm going to actually do this now that he doesn't have a board. I think this is a super sick play. I also think this is a counter spell, so I almost coined this Nazoth's first main out, but. Anyways, 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 anyways. So the fact that it came from this mod that was purely a gameplay mechanic type thing, I think that there has rarely, if ever, been a game where there was innovation in gameplay and innovation in story in a big way on both of those. Certainly, most games will have some innovation of gameplay, undoubtedly, but I mean, coming up with a whole brand new fucking genre, a MOBA, pretty, pretty damn uncommon for that to happen. So we're at turn five, so I think this is a reasonable run out. And so I think it's very natural for... Dota 2 and League of Legends to not have stories because they were simply trying to get the game out. And I think it's a very difficult question that requires a lot of thoughtfulness for you to say, how do I actually construct... Okay, what deck is this? I kind of have a feeling that we are about to be up against... Flame Strike. I think I confused myself and assumed that he was an aggro deck because I wanted to make a secret aggro deck. Huh, whatever. So don't necessarily think... Actually, I absolutely under no circumstance think that Valve is in some way an incompetent game developer or that they are bad or any such thing. I actually think that they are truly exceptional. I'm just trying to say that I find it understandable and justifiable that 
There's no lore there. I just... I just... And also, we're sort of hitting a point where I think that... Um, by the way, that's too much of a superlative to say no lore or no backstory. I mean, but I just mean the cohesive style world and mythos that other games have. Aaron Tui says, you say MOBAs are um, the same in lack of story. Yeah, yeah, in terms of when they were initially created. I should have been more clear. But I'll say, who characters have backstories and voice acting in the lines... Uh, in creeping, creeping with, keeping with it. League of Legends actually had this in a huge way, in a hugely problematic way, where they, um, their lore was basically some people, uh, at launch, like initially, was some people had some good ideas, so they put that in. Some people had some bad ideas, and those got put in. Some people had some random ideas, and those got put in. I kind of forgot that I actually don't have level 60 with all the characters. It's just Warrior and Hunter. What do you know? Oh, yeah. And then over time, as League just started stapling in more and more and more and more characters, uh, they brought in like a lore team that essentially had to throw out everything. <laughs> he just chucked all that shit away. I think I do this. I think this is right. They literally just ch chucked it. And now uh, Riot is rebuilding all of the lore. They are rebuilding all their lore. Oh shit. Oh damn. I, my clicking accuracy is bad today. I almost just like ran this in there. We won the video game! And, you know, this entire conversation began because I liked to poke fun at. Nix, 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 Nix. I live for one purpose. Pick up Nyx! One, two, pick up Nyx. There's a probability that we can actually play this and this on the same turn. Um, this really began with me just poking fun, and I think that it, um... There's a question of where are where do the layers of different types of fun come in for people? What is it that What is it that gets them excited and motivated? Do I want to go for face here? No, I think I actually just clear. Continue to build a board. I can do a trade there. Seems good. And you don't need to have you, don't, you do not need to nail it on every layer to be an absolutely 10 out of 10 amazing game. I think Dota 2 is a 10 out of 10 amazing, fantastic, glorious game. I adore playing Dota. Absolutely brilliant piece. But I'm just throwing a poke fun at something silly. And there's sort of a funniness where, because Dota 2 and League of Legends and Heroes of the Storm and Smite as well, basically dominate the market. <laughs> These games are fucking easy. Because those already exist, it's very hard to develop a new MOBA that tries to account for that. We're going to take a micro break. going to take a micro break. I'm going to finish this point when we come back in 15 seconds. Here we go. Just wait. <laughs> 